Synclética. Ama Synclética said, In the beginning there are a great many battles and a good deal of suffering for those who are advancing towards God, and afterwards ineffable joy. It is like those who wish to light a fire. At first they are choked by the smoke and cry, and by this means obtain what they seek. As it is said, our God is a consuming fire. So we also must kindle the divine fire in ourselves through tears and hard work. She also said, We who have chosen this way of life must obtain perfect temperance. It is true that among seculars also temperance has a freedom of the city, but intemperance cohabitates with it because they sin with all the other senses. Their gaze is shameless, and they laugh immoderately. She also said, Just as the most bitter medicine drives out poisonous creatures, so prayer, joined to fasting, drives evil thoughts away. She also said, Do not let yourself be seduced by the delights of the riches of the world as though they contained something useful on account of vain pleasure. Worldly people esteem the culinary art, but you, through fasting and thanks to cheap food, go beyond their abundance of food. It is written, He who is sated loathes honey. Do not fill yourselves with bread, and you will not desire wine. Blessed Sincletica was asked if poverty is a perfect good. She said, For those who are capable of it, it is a perfect good. Those who can sustain it in receiving suffering in the body, but rest in the soul. For just as one washes coarse clothes by trampling them underfoot and turning them about in all directions, even so the strong soul becomes much more stable thanks to voluntary poverty. She also said, If you find yourself in a monastery, do not go to another place, for that will harm you a great deal. Just as the bird who abandons the eggs she was sitting on prevents them from hatching, so the monk or the nun grows cold and their face dies when they go from one place to another. She also said, Many are the wiles of the devil. If he is not able to disturb the soul by means of poverty, he suggests riches as an attraction. If he has not won the victory by insults and disgrace, he suggests praise and glory. Overcome by health, he makes the body ill. Not having been able to seduce it through pleasures, he tries to overthrow it by involuntary sufferings. He joins to this very severe illness to disturb the faint-hearted in their love of God. He also destroys the body by very violent fevers and weighs it down with intolerable thirst. If, being a sinner, you undergo all these things, remind yourself of the punishment to come, the everlasting fire, and the sufferings inflicted by justice, and do not be discouraged here and now. Rejoice that God visits you, and keep this blessed saying on your lips. The Lord has chastened me sorely, but he has not given me over unto death. You were iron, but fire has burnt the rust off you. If you are righteous and fall ill, you will go from strength to strength. Are you gold? You will pass through the fire purged. Have you been given a thorn in the flesh? Exult! And see who else was treated like that. It is an honor to have the same sufferings as Paul. Are you being tried by fever? Are you being taught by cold? Indeed, Scripture says, We went through fire and water, yet thou hast brought us forth to a spacious place. You have drawn the first lot, expect the second. By virtue, offer holy words in a loud voice. For it is said, I am afflicted and in pain. By this share of wretchedness you will be made perfect. For he said, 
The Lord hears when I call him. So, open your mouth wider to be taught by these exercises of the soul, seeing that we are under the eyes of our enemy. She also said, If illness weighs us down, let us not be sorrowful, as though, because of the illness and the prostration of our bodies, we could not sing. For all these things are for our good, for the purification of our desires. Truly fasting and sleeping on the ground are set before us because of our sensuality. If illness then weakens this sensuality, the reason for these practices is superfluous. For this is the great asceticism, to control oneself in illness, and to sing hymns of thanksgiving to God. She also said, When you have to fast, do not pretend illness. For those who do not fast often fall into real sicknesses. If you have begun to act well, do not turn back through constraint of the enemy. For through your endurance, the enemy is destroyed. Those who put out to sea at first sail with a favorable wind. Then the sails spread, but later the winds become adverse. Then the ship is tossed by the waves and is no longer controlled by the rudder. But when in a little while there is calm and the tempest dies down, then the ship sails on again. So it is with us, when we are driven by the spirits who are against us, we hold to the cross as our sail, and so we can set a safe course. She also said, Those who have endured the labors and dangers of the sea, and then amass material riches, even when they have gained much desire to gain yet more, and they consider what they have at present as nothing, and reach out for what they have not got. We, who have nothing of that which we desire, wish to acquire everything through the fear of God. She also said, Imitate the publican, and you will not be condemned with the Pharisee. Choose the meekness of Moses, and you will find your heart, which is as a rock, changed into a spring of water. She also said, It is dangerous for anyone to teach who has not been trained in the practical life. For if someone who owns a ruined house receives guests there, he does them harm because of the dilapidation of his dwelling. It is the same in the case of someone who has not first built an interior dwelling. He causes loss to those who come. By words one may convert them to salvation, but by evil behavior one injures them. She also said, It is good not to get angry, but if this should happen, the apostle does not allow you a whole day for this passion, for he says, Let not the sun go down. Will you wait till all your time is ended? Why hate the man who has grieved you? It is not he who has done the wrong, but the devil. Hate sickness, but not the sick person. She also said, Those who are great athletes must contend against stronger enemies. She also said, There is an asceticism which is determined by the enemy and his disciples practice it. So how are we to distinguish between the divine and royal asceticism and the demonic tyranny? Clearly through its quality of balance. Always use a single rule of fasting. Do not fast four or five days and break it the following day without any amount of food. In truth, lack of proportion always corrupts. While you are young and healthy, fast, for old age, with its weaknesses, will come. As long as you can, lay up treasure, so that when you cannot, you will be at peace. She also said, As long as we are in the monastery, obedience is preferable to asceticism. The one teaches pride, the other humility. She also said, We must direct our souls with discernment. As long as we are in the monastery, we must not seek our own will, nor follow our personal opinion, but obey our fathers in the faith. 
She also said, It is written, Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Being like serpent means not ignoring attacks and wiles of the devil. Like is quickly known to like. The simplicity of the dove denotes purity of action. Amastin Kletika said, There are many who live in the mountains and behave as if they were in the town, and they are wasting their time. It is possible to be a solitary in one's mind while living in a crowd, and it is possible for one who is a solitary to live in the crowd of his own thoughts. She also said, In the world, if we commit an offense, even an involuntary one, we are thrown into prison. Let us likewise cast ourselves into prison because of our sins, so that voluntary remembrance may anticipate the punishment that is to come. She also said, Just as a treasure that is exposed loses its value, so a virtue which is known vanishes, just as wax melts when it is near fire. So the soul is destroyed by praise and loses all the results of its labor. She also said, Just as it is impossible to be at the same moment both a plant and a seed, so it is impossible for us to be surrounded by worldly honor, and at the same time to bear heavenly fruit. She also said, My children, we all want to be saved, but because of our habit of negligence, we swerve away from salvation. She also said, We must arm ourselves in every way against the demons, for they attack us from outside, and they also stir us up from within. And the soul is then like a ship when great waves break over it, and at the same time it sinks because the hold is too full. We are just like that. We lose as much by the exterior faults we commit as by the thoughts inside us. So we must watch for the attacks of men that come from outside us and also repel the interior onslaughts of our thoughts. She also said, Here below we are not exempt from temptations. For Scripture says, Let him who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. We sail on in darkness. The psalmist calls our life a sea, and the sea is either full of rocks or very rough, or else it is calm. We are like those who sail on a calm sea, and seculars are like those on a rough sea. We always set our course by the sun of justice, but it can often happen that the secular is saved in tempest and darkness, for he keeps watch as he ought, while we go to the bottom through negligence, although we are on a calm sea, because we have let go of the guidance of justice. She also said, Just as one cannot build a ship unless one has some nails, so it is impossible to be saved without humility. She also said, There is grief that is useful, and there is grief that is destructive. The first sort consists in weeping over one's own faults and weeping over the weaknesses of one's neighbors in order not to destroy one's purpose and attach oneself to the perfect good. But there is also a grief that comes from the enemy, full of mockery, which some call axity. This spirit must be cast out, mainly by prayer and 